Hey, this week on Table and Craft, we're going to be making some pillars, column things, a more carved stone one and a more brick stone one. And then they also have some matching archways. This week I really wanted to make something that was going to be very versatile and very useful. I had kind of two ideas. One originally was just going to be like this more kind of like stone brick one. But then I got to thinking, I'm like, what about if something was a little more sophisticated looking? Uh, and so I came up with this kind of more stoned uh, carved looking one. So yeah, I made both of them and I wanted a couple archways to match. I made a total, uh, so I made two of each of these and then I made eight of these and I'm thinking about making some even larger one of these uh, just in case I want them to like scale really well next to this archway but other than that I think they turned out pretty awesome I used similar techniques on each but varied them slightly so let's go to the table and craft again I'm already at my table so off camera I got all of my foam cut to size and then I started to add the details for the carved looking stone. And I just eyeballed this with a ruler and my X-Acto knife. Just cut really thin strips off of each of the corners to give it a bit more dimension. Make it look a bit more fancy and like I said, a little bit more sophisticated. I wanted something that could fit in a dungeon and also maybe in a courtyard or like a kind of a nicer city area. And this was kind of my solution for that. This is one of those projects where I didn't really draw up many plans to start on the pillars. I just kind of started cutting things and started putting them in places and gluing things together. So that's what you're seeing here. I'm just kind of winging it. And it really worked out for me in the long run. I was, it wasn't a really complex build, so I was able to do that and feel really comfortable in moving forward. So getting these hot glued up and on the bottom and the top before adding a little bit more detail on the, the smaller flatter pieces the bases and the top caps i did that again just by kind of following that same little detail i did on the, the edges of the pillar and just cut off little squares from each corner on both of those lower layer stacks just like so and it had a really really nice result i've kind of been going back and forth between adding texture to stone rock or brick and between using a rolled up ball of tin foil and this tool uh, that was inspired by, well, I guess it was, I followed a, t a tutorial for uh, from Tabletop Witchcraft. I've been using this more on carved stone than I have on like rock or brick. And uh, I really like it. So yeah, kind of experimenting with new textures. But I then took the poker of my clay sculpting tool and just started drawing random cracks into this. I, again, like I said, I wanted it to be versatile. So it needed to be believable in a more kind of like worn, kind of forgotten place and a place that was a bit, you know, nicer, but maybe older. I didn't really have any kind of direction at the beginning of this, like I said, as far as like what these arches would look like. So kind of mid-project, I started look at, looking at Google Images and finding kind of some inspiration there. And I just kind of made things up as I went along. Using the ballpoint pen is a really great tool. You can add really easy texture and kind of, I guess, design elements uh, just with the pen, which is fantastic when working with XPS foam. So I had a little bit of trim pieces, uh, kind of like look like a little bit extra carbon to make it look nicer. Now I don't have a jig for my hot wire cutter to cut circles. And I imagine other people do this as well. I used to have a compass, can't find it, but I just kind of start looking through my house for things that are around and will be the size that I need them to be. And this time around, it was a mustache wax that was the right size. So leave a comment down below if you do the same thing. I just, I can't be the only one. Now I couldn't find anything that would be the exact right size for the second half circle I had to draw. So I just kind of eyeballed it. It worked out, it wasn't per perfect, but you know what? I don't think that stonework's always gonna be perfect, especially for the look that I was going for. So good enough. What I found with working with XPS foam is there's really kind of two schools uh, of thought when working with it. There's a reduction way where you cut foam away and then there's 
like addition when you add foam to more foam. And uh, as you can see with the pillars, I did a reduction where I cut my piece and then I reduced foam from the corners to give it that kind of uh, different edge profile. With the archway, I'm actually adding foam and each time I add a layer, I make it a little bit thicker and I add a little bit more texture and it really kind of develops this really nice looking piece. So think about that when you're working with XPS foam. You know, you don't have to do one or the other, but there's they're both possible within the same project. So go wild. There really isn't one that I favor over the other. Sometimes if I reduce something, I don't like the way it looks. I can just, you know, add a bit more foam to cover it up. This particular archway is actually a really good example of adding layers. Uh, I get my kind of foundation in the block and then I added a kind of a thinner uh, square border around half of it and then the circular piece was a little bit thicker than that and now I'm adding like this kind of keystone to the center of it and I have to cut away foam to add more foam and this last piece that I put in there is even thicker than the half round piece. Uh, just be sure when you do work this way that you do have a total width of the actual object you're working with in mind. Otherwise, uh, I could get this the top of this arch to be a lot wider than the pillars that it was going to be sitting on. I wanted to add a little bit more flavor or design to this arch, so I took some barbecue skewers and I kind of stuck them in there, kind of like they were like wood scaffolding or like lattice, I don't know what the right word is, just kind of built up inside the arch. And I just kind of measured these by eye, cut them down, stuck them in, and then I ended up gluing all of the pieces together at the, the center of that kind of bottom crossbar. And then ended up doing a good paint on them, and I really like the way they turned out. Um, I might try something a little bit different next time just so I can give them a little bit more texture. I didn't do that beforehand, so they, they're pretty smooth, and I wish they were a little bit more rough and had a little bit more kind of a wood look to them. I had to really try and make up for it with the paint. Um, and it came out okay. The next step after this was to paint everything. And I actually kind of changed, I don't change, I just do two different methods when painting these pillars compared to the next pillars that we'll talk about. But I started again with a black base with Mod Podge and acrylic paint. Then I did like a medium gray on top of it. And then I did a heavy dry brushing of a little bit lighter gray before adding my wash. And I did just a black wash on this one because I wanted them to kind of come out a bit more gray than brown which is funny because I actually end up adding a little bit more brown later because I felt like they needed a little bit more color to them so I did all that and then I did a final dry brushing of the light tan that I really like and kind of finished them off that way got a little comparison here between what they look like uh, without the dry brush and with and with the dry brush it got the exact result I was looking for um, again but then later decided to add a little bit more uh, color to it after getting these all painted up, it was time to attach them to some of the pillars that I'd made. And I kind of used a little bit of paint to find the center and be able to transfer uh, that to, from the bottom pillar to the uh, archway uh, to make sure that they lined up just how I wanted them to. This is a really great method to use. You can also just like poke the skewer right into the top in the center, just find it with your eye, which I did on some of them, and then just line up the top and get your second mark with by just poking it into it again. So then everything got attached with some hot glue and I added a little bit more color with some, I think it's Agrax, Agrax Earthshade by Citadel. Uh, it could be the sepia one, I can't remember. But let's talk about the next set of pillars. Remember when I talked about making sure you know what your overall width is that you're going for? This was really important on this particular one because I was going to be adding bricks all the way around. So I didn't want it just to be all bricks, so I, I cut a bunch of uh, smaller columns, and they are much thinner than the columns that I had made for the previous set of pillars because I was going to be adding more bricks to them. So here they are. You can see the bricks, and the columns are a lot skinnier, and this was kind of the pattern I was going for around the column. I play on a one-inch grid, so I wanted my columns to be about one inch, and that's what I ended up with doing a quick rounding off of the bricks by rubbing them between my hands. This is a little bit dusty, but I like it a little bit more, and I just add the texture later. But I did the very bottom layer with just hot glue, so there was a good kind of foundation that was solid and I could keep working. But the faster way to do this was to just do, like, 
a bunch of tacky glue and then just kind of add bricks like brick by brick. It was way faster than doing it with hot glue. I started out that way and then uh, ended up just opting for doing the very bottom row of bricks and hot glue and then the rest with the tacky glue. Always try and find faster ways to work because some of this stuff, especially when you're going brick by brick, can take a lot of time. So any shortcuts you can find, always, always do them. And I just decided to cap them off with more bricks. I thought about doing a plate on top, but decided against it in the long run. I also decided against this in the long run. I was going to just do these all brick, and I built these little half circle arches, again, with finding random bottles and stuff in my house. And I didn't like it, so I went for a different kind of arch. And in this way, I think it worked out better, because then they weren't going to look as similar to the previous arches that I made. So I went with a more kind of square arch, and then I kind of added some trim pieces onto it uh, and just started building from there. I was mostly just making this up as I went along, but again, I kind of used both methods here. You just saw me kind of, I, I add to the foam first, and then you'll see in a second that I actually reduce again, and I kind of use that same method of just kind of eyeballing and cutting a little bit, of, little bit off of the corners to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more depth. And yeah, I, this is kind of an interesting discovery for me. You know, I, it's, it's kind of silly when you look at it. It's like, yeah, of course you, you cut away and you add to, but like you can accomplish what I just made, not very easily with only reducing foam, or you could accomplish it with only adding foam. It, it's just kind of a really interesting mindset. So you can kind of see what the possibilities are. And then from there, decide which one is going to be the most efficient way of working with your piece. So got these hot glued on. Uh, the texture turned out really good on these with that tin foil. I mean, I was really pleased with the way they ended up. So much so that I didn't even add any kind of extra cracks to them. I was just really pleased with what I had there. I then kind of prepped these with a coating of Mod Podge again and started to paint. I started to use the same colors, but you'll see that I do something a bit different here. You've seen me do it in some of my past videos if you've watched those. If you haven't, definitely go check those out. But what I do is I get the base color down and then I go and I paint select stones in a much lighter gray. I end up using like a light green and a dark green as well. Um, I didn't opt for any kind of yellows or reds in this one. I wanted to keep it uh, a bit on the grayer side. So, But from there, I actually take that same light gray color that I'm painting in, on individual stones, and then I do a dry brushing over the whole thing, a heavy dry brushing in that same color uh, to lighten up the whole piece. And here's a good comparison of what it looks like. Uh, and after that, instead of doing the wash now, I actually put on the light tan dry brushing to get a bit more highlights. The main difference between a heavy dry brush and a light dry brush is the heavy dry brush, you're going to have a little bit more paint in your bristles and you're going to push a little bit harder on the piece. A light dry brush, less paint, lighter. And you get a lot more coverage with the heavy dry brush and the lighter dry brush is going to bring out those highlights like you see here. But I was really happy with the way these turned out and let's take a look at some shots of them before we kind of wrap up this video. so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed the video i had a lot of fun making the pillars and the archways i might make more like i said uh next week's video or maybe some upcoming video i don't know if it'll be next week or the week after that but one of these weeks videos in october i want to be more of a how on theme with halloween uh, i have some skulls so maybe something with that but uh yeah curious what other people are going to be making this month with the theme of halloween anything spooky or scary or grotesque or all three please comment below and let me know. Go ahead and give me a follow over on Instagram. I'll put it right here. And 
I post there all the time. So check it out. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow the channel. Thank you so much for your support and those who have commented. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.